said, what about the girls that are still out there? And I thought about all those girls, those beautiful women that I saw growing up that were beautiful, that turned into prostitutes, that were sexually abused and beaten, that were raped in every way imaginable, that were beautiful and God had a story for. So one day I'm reading my Bible, bless me, I'm reading my Bible and I'm reading the name of Tamar, I'm reading Tamar's Hope. I'm reading from 2 Samuel 13 and it's talking about the daughter of King David um, who was raped by her half-brother Amnon. And um, it turns out that she wound up living in desolation the day, all the rest of the days of her life because any daughter of the king back in those days, if you weren't a virgin, you weren't getting married, and that was it. You were like your life was over, and you weren't going to have kids or a family or anything. So when I read that story, and I'm wrapping up, but when I read that story, I thought to myself, I said, you know, her life can't end like that. You know, I was mad. Like, I was like, her life can't end like that. Like, she's got to, you know, I was thinking, and, and, and I was like, Tamar's hope. That's the name of the ministry, Tamar's Hope, because the ministry is for all women that have been sexually abused and raped and have been caught up in sexual exploitation and prostitution that have no hope and think that that's the end of their story and it ends in desolation like that. And it's hope to let them know that it's not alone and they're not alone and it doesn't have to be that way for them. So started the ministry, and I'll end in saying this, that the, um, the brother that I told you about that was telling me about the Lord, um, that, was, that was the brother that sexually abused me after he was telling me about Jesus. So he was working on me for a year to take me away from what I was doing on my own because I was running from the abuse. And in the back of his mind, he had another plan for me because he wanted me for himself. And I woke up one day and he was telling me about the Lord and after I had accepted the Lord and he started touching me, I started to wake up with him in, in the bed touching me in the, in the middle of the night. And... Um, I, I was so confused. I was like, Lord, what is this? Everywhere I go, I've had these perpetrators touching me and abusing me. And that's how sexual abuse works. It works through people that want to use you and take advantage of you in a way and then turn around and say it was your fault and you wanted it and you live in desolation. And God, God said, You're not your story's not gonna end like that. So I started this ministry and I turned my life. I was <coughs> sold out for Jesus, sold out for the Lord. And when you're sold out for the Lord on that level, it's hard and it's painful. But he takes you through this process of dry bones and everything you think was dead and could never be resurrected into again. He takes you through that process and he breathes the breath of life into you and he starts to put skin back on those bones and he starts to teach you how to. The Holy Spirit was my, my teacher and my mentor and my God. He taught me how to take a shower every day. He taught me how to put deodorant on. He put women in my life that mentored me. He told me that I was worth somebody, that I was worth a grain of salt, that I wasn't like the, a piece of, 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 of like lower than a roach, you know, on the bottom of somebody's shoe. He gave me back the confidence. He didn't even give it back to me. He gave me confidence because I never had it to begin with. He gave me confidence to live for him and I said to the Lord, if you can do anything with this life, I said, I will give it to you 100% and I will stop running. <laughs> and, um, and this is what he does for, for, for me and the girls on the street today. Because when I go out there and when we go out there, I look at those girls and I'm like, 
but for the grace of God there you are. Because I could have easily been one of these girls. We've had girls that have turned up dead. They, they're Jane Doe's. They don't have names. They don't have faces to anybody. But they do to God. They matter to God. And I'll end the story with this and say, one of my favorite stories is the starfish story. Have you ever heard of it? No. The starfish story is about a son and a, and a father, and they're walking on the beach, right? And all of these starfish are on the beach, right? And they're walking, and this, the son, the little boy, is taking out the starfish, and he's throwing the starfish into the ocean. And his dad looks at him, and he goes, son, he goes, what are you doing, son? And he goes, oh, I'm saving the starfish, dad, look, what I'm doing. He goes, you can't save all those starfish. It's like it doesn't matter. There's too many. You can't just save them all. He picks up another starfish. He throws it in the water. He goes, it mattered to that one. He picked up another starfish. He threw it in the water. He goes, it mattered to that one. <laughs> I love this starfish story because it's like we don't always have to change our life overnight in one day. We don't have to do it all in one night. We can do one little thing, and over time, those little things add up. And then, after we add up all the, that time, after days, months, and years, we look back, and we're like, whoa, look what the Lord has done, right? And that's what he's done in my life today, and that's how I'm here to be able to share with you. And that's my story. Praise the Lord.